Starting us off on this episode is my guy Gary. He said, Hey, Graven, do you think we should be trying to sign Marcus Peters now? Because if he keeps playing well, his price keeps going up. Just a thought, really value your opinion. Thanks, keep being great. Hey, I, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you valuing our opinion. Uh, we definitely value yours as well. But um, we are definitely not great. and We're not great at all. Uh, somebody who is great, though, at playing a game of football is Marcus Peters. And Marcus Peters, um, I feel like every, every Ravens fan just loves Marcus Peters. Well, of course, there's always going to be something that's like, oh, I don't like Marcus Peters because of his attitude. And I but anyway, I love Marcus Peters. Um, I would love for him to be a Raven forever. I, I, I would love for him uh, to continue to play corner for the Ravens next couple of years. And then if he starts slowing up, hey, make that transition to safety. He is the Ed Reed of cornerbacks. So imagine, imagine Marcus Peters. And I know he's not the best tackler. He's not the most physical guy. I, I know that. Uh, and it's, it's with, with Marcus Peters with the tackling, it could be up and it could be down. Like we saw in the Bengals game. Early on, it was up. Marcus Peters was all physical and what up. Then there were some places like, <laughs> Marcus Peters, okay. <laughs> hey. But anyway, Marcus Peters is nice. But um, I know as a safety, as a safety, you're the last line of defense. Um, and he's not the most physical guy. But imagine Marcus Peters with the entire field. In his vision, the entire field, like he's able to see literally everything, everybody, and imagine him with the green. Di oh my goodness, boy! I feel like with Marcus Peters, like he would um, if whoever Ravens defensive coordinator was, they sent in a play. I feel like Marcus Peters would just turn up the aggression on whatever play they sent in every single time. Um, but anyway, should they try to sign him now? It would be nice. But I don't see it happening. Uh, I think it's one of those things where, one, they want to see how he fully bounces back from his injury. But even beyond that, I, I just think the business may get in the way of this relationship. Um, they are currently paying Marlon Humphrey a significant amount of money. And he is delivering. Uh, Marlon Humphrey has been playing. This is the best I think we've ever seen Marlon Humphrey play. Um, they drafted two corners. And, of course, you can never have enough corners, as we already know. Um, I, I just It just seems like they could be transitioning out and away from uh, uh, Marcus Peters. Um, and I, I would hate that, but I, 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 the business, man, it's the business. Um, I, I do not think that they are going to want to pay. Because Marcus Peters, again, when his contract is up, I, I am certain he is going to want to get paid. And I will have no problem with that. I, I never upset with the players wanting to get the most bread that they could possibly get. And with Marcus Peters, I just think it'll be one of them scenarios where, hey, Ravens may give him an offer. And I'm, he, he loves Baltimore. He loves the Ravens, loves the organization, all that stuff. But I just think he's going to be able to cash out a lot more elsewhere. Um, and I just don't see Ravens paying two corners, top corner money. I know they've, they've done it, like, with Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. Both of them making a significant amount of money. But I just, I don't see them doing it again, especially when you hope that they're still going to sign uh, Lamar Jackson to his deal. It, and it's not even one of those things that's not doable because they could certainly do it, but I just don't think the Ravens want to. Um, and the next, que well, next part of his question, he said, I'm just checking in to see how you and Pookie and your family are keeping. We're doing good, man. I appreciate that. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I had to put my dog down. My heart is broken. Just wanted to share this with you and team keep it clean. Stay safe and I send my love to everyone. Thanks. Oh, man. That's tough, man. Mm. I, I, I really do feel for you, man. I, I feel for you, uh, especially as a dog owner. And I know, um, like, with dogs, they, they become family. Like, I mean, they are family. Like initially, um, especially with if 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 it's if you first get a dog, uh, if it's your first dog, you're like, okay, cool, just the the pet, family pet, da da da. da. Um, and early on, you'll like the dog or whatever, but over time, over the dog peeing inside the apartment, uh, over the dog spilling water all over the place, over the dog pooping inside the apartment, over the dog the the walks, the the, the mess ups, them ripping stuff up. Um, they uh they they take you through a lot and you go through a, a, a you go through some bad and some annoying stuff but it's all part of the process because over time I mean you go through a lot more good than bad and and you love that dog uh so that's again like I said it's family 
They become family. Um, the dog is part of your everyday routine. Whether you take them uh, around to, to walk them, um, you just wake up and you hear them like you hear the tail wagging, you hear them breathing, uh, you hear the excitement, and it's uh, it's part of your everyday routine. So if that's gone, like I know that can just that I know it's tough. I know it's tough. So uh, you know you you already know we rocking with you, the whole team. Keep it clean, uh, rocking with you, and we know that that's a that's I know that's a tough situation. I uh, oh man I I can't uh, thinking about I can, I can only think about uh, what that's like because I haven't had to experience that yet. Um, but I know when that time comes, I I know it's gonna be tough, man. Um, so I, I I know just thinking about I, I can't even think about how tough it is because I've never been through it. Um, but I know there's gonna be people with Team Keep It Clean that have unfortunately been through it. Um, so they'll know. But um. I, I do really feel bad for you, I really do, cause that I got it's gotta be really really tough, man. Uh, but keep your head up, man, and uh, I know just uh, just think about all all the time that you spend with the dog, man. All the time that you spend with the dog, the uh, look at pictures, old videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, man, I, I I do really feel for you, my guy. Oh man, next question uh, came from my guy Juan G. Uh, he said, are you ready for game day? Uh, these Giants, man, it's really just a running game we need to stop. If the Ravens really come out and they play their overall game and stop Saquon, I don't think we'll have a problem beating them. Yeah, I, that's my biggest fear as well. My, my biggest issue or thing that the Ravens need to stop is Saquon Barkley. Uh, I feel like if they can take him out the game, I feel like it, they, they'll be good to go. I feel like they'll be good to go. Now, that's easier said than done. Um, and it's still these Ravens we're talking about. Um, but I don't know, it's weird that like the more that I've been thinking about this game, initially I said 30 to 22 Ravens, but the more that I think about this game, this just feels like one of those Ravens games where they just like, they really, really take care of business in a major way. Uh, so winning like by multiple scores uh, uh, and we'll see how it goes down. Um, but Saquon Barkley is to me is the biggest X factor, uh, in this whole thing. Um, you know, Giants going to bring it though. They're not sitting at four and one, uh, for nothing. So they, they definitely going to bring it, um, and, and we're going to see how this thing shakes out. Next question came from Nazarene. Say, hey, fam, how are you? Hope all is well. I just want to say that if we want a pro bowler or elite wide receiver, we will have to trade Bateman. I do not. I repeat, I do not see us distributing that ball to three wide receivers, a tight end, and a running back. I don't see it, fam. Uh, we barely pass into the receivers now. Lamar is winning for sure, and I love how he embarrasses defense, but my boy got tunnel vision. Shout out to Kodak Black. Hey, hand in hand, Lamar Kodak. Anyway, his eyes tell who he's going to throw it to, and he doesn't like to throw the inside short slant. We look for the big plays too much. Greg Roman is doo-doo. Lamar's mechanics are better, but who's going to teach him how to scan the field? So, yeah, we should get a big-name receiver and trade Bateman. Uh, another team would love him, so the fans get a proven receiver. Bateman gets the pressure off his back, and another team gets a dog. I, 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 no, I, wow, this, uh, this, this was a lot right here. Um, a lot to unpack with this one. Uh, but no, I, no. With Bateman, um, that's why I, I, I just really, uh, I gotta get one of my film guys. I, oh, yeah, I, I got an idea for who I wanna bring on to discuss this topic right here. Because it's something that I've been wondering about. Um, is it that, these receivers are just not getting open is it that lamar jackson is just not hitting them when they are open um is it the scheme like what what is it with the ravens and the pass cut because bateman he be getting his shots devin duvenay be getting his shot obviously mark andrews be getting his but what is it with a lot of the other guys are they just clamped up like that or are they just not a, or like what 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 is the issue? Or is it Lamar? Is 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 it Lamar's a problem? As far as him scanning the field, I, I feel like he scans the field a lot. There's sometimes when he he will miss somebody, where where he won't see somebody that could be wide open, um, and that's easier said than done. Like looking at it from the film, we see all 22. We we we, we see that uh, even in the broadcast view, we we was like, oh man, that guy was wide open. Lamar didn't even see him. But it could be a whole lot of something else going on while that guy is wide open. It all just depends on the play. But I, um, I'm going to follow up on this one. I would not trade Rashad Bateman for um, just 
in order to get an elite wide, I would pay them both. I would bring them both. Because the more the merrier. The more the merrier. Like, what? why not? Why give, why give the QB less weapons? Um, why, why not give him more? But anyway, I, uh, yeah, I'm going to bring somebody on soon, and we're going to talk about that one. Next question came from my guy, Jeff. He said, should we be more worried about the interior of the defense than a true number one wide receiver? Angry Raven, hope everything is going well with you and yours, and for all the team, keep it clean fam out there. My question isn't that we shouldn't try to better the wide receiver court, but that it shouldn't be top priority to trade for only a for a only top receiver and that arguably we could use a stud in the middle of the defensive line to greater affect the outcome of games the offense seems to be doing well aside from leaving points on the field and most offenses figure it out uh, also we lost two almost three games after leading by at least double digits my thought is maybe this we try and get darren deron Payne. uh we oh ain't he on washington i think uh he said we then extend marcus peters oh hey timing is everything huh uh, and do some more salary cap gymnastics and try to get Denzel Mims, whose cap hit is a little over one mil. And Payne is around eight mil. Uh, it would be nice to trade for Roquan Smith, but seems highly unlikely and would probably require Patrick Queen. Or at least, if I was the Bears, that's what I'd try to do to get an immediate player to come in at the position. Yeah, that makes sense. It'd be nice to have both of them, though. But... Can we be choosers? Uh, anyway, he said, I do believe that the second half of the season, we will see much more production from the pass rush once we get all the players back and in rotation. Uh, if we can do that, then it's safe to assume the turnovers would increase, giving Lamar that many more possessions. I just think this season, the defense of the Ravens has got to play till the final whistle, even more so than the offense. Let me know what you think, my friend. Always fun bouncing ideas around for sure. It always is. It's so much fun to think about all of these different things. Um, they lost Marcus, um, Michael Pierce. Um, and that was a really big loss. That was a really, really, really big loss. Um, they lost Marcus Williams, too. Man, they lost Kyle Fuller. They lost some significant guys uh, on defense. Um, it's crazy. Um, but Deron Payne, um, getting an interior guy who could pr provide some pressure, that would be nice. Uh, it would certainly help. But I just, my thing is, um, why, not, why not prioritize the offense? Uh, the defense is coming around, uh, but why not put that much more stock in, 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 into the offense? Um, Ravens have been doing this defensive thing for years. It's like, hey, all right, let's go get a proven guy. And I, I understand where, you, where you're going with it because you want to get interior pressure. You want to help up the pass rush, and I get that. Um, but why not up the, the pass game? Why not up the, the guys that put the points on the field? Why not up that? Because, again, there's, there's been a lot of resources, a lot of money, a lot of everything put into the defense, uh, especially when it comes to proving guys. But why not do that on offense? I, I would have had no problem with De'Ron Payne, but I just – because it's like even, even you, you went the uh, – and I know I think you did say that you think the offense will be fine. Um, so I, I see why you went the way that you went. But even your, your thing on, uh, on, on offense versus defense, you said try and get De'Ron Payne. Salary cap hit is like 8 mil. But then you said for the wide receiver, get Denzel Mims, who's not even active on game day right now. He's like the Jets, like, what, 20th receiver on the depth chart. Um, and his cap hit is like a little over a mil. So it's like, all right, defense we pay, but offense, no, we, we got to be cheap on offense. So. Anyway, he said, P.S., just once I love to see Lamar and Huntley on the field together in a split back shotgun formation with a back just to see if it could work due to all three being able to run. Two can throw, and who knows how well Lamar and Huntley can catch. But if they can, good luck containing that offense, even if it's the same few plays <laughs> every time. Oh, yeah, you, you done been messing with that 2019 Giro too much. The last two questions came from my guy, Gold Morano. He said, what's good, Engraven? Uh, thanks for making the football season so much more fun and exciting. I don't know if we do all that, but, I mean, Ravens, they do another job of that. But, anyway, I appreciate you. I was curious to know if you happen to know that DJ Moore is actually a Philadelphia native. Uh, the only other team that could bring him any closer to his hometown would be the Eagles. And they are, they've already blessed their QB with top-tier talent. Uh, the talking heads are now pondering the idea of Baltimore as a possible destination for free agent slot receiver Odell Beckham Jr. I don't, I don't think the, I just do not see the Ravens. I don't, nothing in me sees the Ravens signing Odell Beckham Jr. Nothing, nothing. I wouldn't mind it once he was healthy, but nothing, nothing in me sees them signing him at all. Um, but anyway, he said, I don't hate the idea, but why not make an offer to trade the 20, 2023 first round pick? Uh, 2024 second round pick and the vastly underutilized James Prochet for DJ Moore and make a strong play for Odell Beckham Jr. in the interim. Am I being unreasonable? 
Oof. I, I like how you think. I, I love that. I love, you like give bring them all. Bring them all. Um, but I, I I love how you you want it all. Like you really try, really trying to upgrade uh those wide receivers. Like, oof, boy, like a, a DJ Moore, a Bateman, a Duvernay, uh an Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, don't forget Mark Andrews. Oh, wait a minute, Lamar Jackson. Oh, that guy, J.K. Dobbins. Oh my goodness. Like you want the offense to be unstoppable, don't you? I I love it. Now you know. I mean, we know it ain't gonna happen, but it would be great. But he said doesn't doesn't feel like it as I type this. Is this organization as committed to Lamar as Lamar is to the organization? Imagine Andrews if we weren't being double if he weren't being double covered. Oh boy. That'd be filthy. If Mark Andrews is always one on one, that would be filthy. He said, "Imagine defenses being forced to open up uh, and play back with Bateman already proving that he's turning out to be an, an unavailable and oft injured player. How much more effective would Dev Duve become with more DJ Moore? Uh, I predict that Lamar's job would become so much easier. He go further into the playoffs, likely win the 2022 MVP, and put Steve Rashadi and his accountant in quite a precarious situation. Waiting for Green Bay to make a move would not be wise. The time to pounce is now. I, I, I love it. He said, I try not to allow my mind to drift back toward the conspiracy theory that EDC is purposely avoiding providing Lamar with that dude at the wide receiver position in an effort to keep the QB's numbers and performance as low as possible leading up to negotiations with LJ8 and his mom this spring. Surely EDC isn't that shrewd, right? Ooh, you talking business, baby. Um, and anything's possible in business. I mean, you would hope that that's not what was going down. Um, but just again, remember, always remember Lamar, his mom, his camp, his people, they are not foolish. They are not stupid. Uh, anyway, next, his next question, uh, was, he said, engraved, I'm glad to know that I'm not alone in my thoughts. I hear the pundits and talking heads speaking on how much sense it would make for DJ Moore to become a Raven. It's the way that people speak about the possible acquisition that concerns me because of Ravens front office history. We have defeat. We have a defeated attitude and lowered expectations ever since Terrell Owens spurned us in 20, uh, 2004. Yeah, that boy T.O. said no. T.O. said N.O. You think I'm eating? They traded for him. That boy said, no, I, I, I ain't playing there. Rave? Rave? Ooh, eh. No, I ain't going there. That dude said he ain't want no part of it. Uh, EDC cannot simply make a casual call of inquiry to Carolina, as some have suggested, but he needs to be a hyper-focused uh, he needs to be hyper focused on coming up with the deal that Carolina can't refuse and then implementing ways to create salary cap space for the 25 year old after this season. The fans should demand nothing less. We can't just accept mediocrity. Yes, we have several needs, but Lamar needs a true lion at wide receiver. And there's no way EDC hasn't realized this. Uh, if he once again ignores the need of his QB, my suspicious my suspicions will only heighten that the Ravens want Lamar to fail just enough. To generate more team leverage during contract negotiations. If our Ravens manage to find themselves with a playoff berth this winter, we can all rest assured that we will once again be a one and done playoff team. If DaCosta doesn't address this need for an elite wide receiver. With the exception of backup Trent Dilfer and the greatest defense ever assembled, the 2000 Ravens, has there ever been a modern Super Bowl champion QB who did not have an elite wide receiver? Unless somebody intends uh, to clone Ray Lewis, we need to get that dude. Mm. Yeah, and again, I, I would definitely hope that that's not the case. Again, with business, you never know. Um, but you would hope that that's not the case. Uh, you you definitely, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I would love for Ravens to upgrade uh, that much more. But I just, oh, that much more. Get it? DJ more, that much more. Okay, that wasn't even on purpose. Um, I don't know. I just, I just don't. The one, one possible option I, I could see them doing would be Robbie Anderson. Uh, DJ Moore, I just don't think it's going to happen at all. Um, I don't see the Ravens getting anybody that's that guy. I see them getting somebody that's supplemental, but I don't see any, but them getting somebody that's that guy. Um, but Robbie Anderson, he could come in and help. Um, but like you mentioned about Bateman, yeah, he has been off the injured. He's, he's missed a good amount of time, man, with injuries last year, now this year, and we'll see how long it lasts this year. Hopefully not too much longer, but... That's another reason why you could bring in somebody else to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Um, health is wealth. Uh, so with Bateman, we know what he can do. We know he can play. We know he can play. 
but you got to be on the field too. So if they brought in somebody else too, uh, the more the merrier. So then when Bateman comes back, Bateman like, oh, okay. I got somebody else to make my job a little easy, okay. Devin Duvernay, oh, like, oh, Bateman's back. Oh, okay, so we got Bateman and this other guy to help make my job easier. And Mark Andrews like, oh, man, <laughs> I've been waiting on this. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.